Hi guys and welcome back to Try Accept. This is your host, Sean. Today I'm going to show you how to build a fast API application around your chess model. So as you can see, the chess model goes into the models directory. I'm going to move the models directory inside the app directory. And within this directory, I'm going to make two new directories called get chess AI move. And the other one will be called startup. So today there's not going to be much new code. It's really just wrapping it in a fast API application. And I have made a video on this before, except in that instance, I was using the traffic AI I'd built. So it'll go into more depth on actually what the different aspects of fast API do and what we're implementing. And this will be a far quicker implementation on it because I really wanted to just lash this out of the way. I don't have too much time on my hands anymore. I'm very spread thin between multiple projects, uh, but I am committed to finishing this tutorial. So I will release the final episode in the coming weeks. It will be surrounding HTML and JavaScript. Specifically, I'm going to try use a uh, chess JS, which was the one I used to build the initial application. And in the final one, I will use that. So if you want to go ahead and actually start that section without me, um, I actually recommend that I'm not the strongest at HTML or JavaScript, and it won't be too hard to figure out. So what you just saw on screen was me setting up the fast API application in the main.py file and I'm configuring the middleware. This is all very basic stuff. The origins has to be set to all and that's represented by the asterisks. So origins equals brackets, asterisks, brackets. Um, and then now we're going to set the credentials and we're going to set the core as middleware. Okay. So now we're going to build the load chess model function. This will load in the model on startup. This code you can actually use across all your projects. And I recommend you have a startup folder dedicated to loading in the model in production code or projects I've worked on in industry. We generally separate the loading models into state functions from the rest of the application because it's a process that can fall over quite easily if files are corrupted or the uh, state is not correct within the application or there's a disagreement between the versions of certain packages which are contained in the model and versions which are contained within the application state. So in this sense you can really isolate this particular function allowing for specific error codes to be thrown. So if you wrap the load model function and try accept, you could do it that way. So next, this is a unique piece that you have to focus on is I've said app.state.chessmodel equals load chess model. This puts the model into the state of the application. And this means that all the endpoints can now access this model. So next we're going to work on chess, get chess AI move, and we're going to add in the init.py file. <clears throat> and I'm going to copy and paste 
a big block of code from the notebook we worked on last video. And you'll see I made a few alterations to it, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay, there it is. Now you can see that the get AI move has a new parameter called chess model. This is because the chess model is no longer a global variable, which in the notebook it would be. So you have to pass it through to each of the relevant functions. So minimax, minimax eval, and get AI move will all have the chess model as an argument or a parameter. You'll also need board positions, square to index, board to matrix, and the other functions as well for this to work. You'll need to import numpy and pandas. And I've just noticed I pasted this into the init.py file. That is incorrect. This should go into a file such as, let's say, chessfunks.py. So chessfunctions.py. Okay, now we're going to make the schema. So these are pedantic schemas. They dictate the JSON payload, which must be sent to the fast API application. And they also dictate the response. So we're going to write class chess request. So this is the request they will send and the FEN representation will be a string. So FEN or FEN is a way to represent the chessboard in string notation. Um, and this will be the notation that we'll send through the JSON object. And this will be the response. We'll give a FEN representation response. So in this case, we're going to say FEN representation, and it'll be a string for both the request and the response. And finally, we're going to write get move.py and this is the most important piece for the endpoint so we're going to make what's called a router and a router is a well it is an endpoint and you can mount it onto the application so from fast api import api router and request we're going to import the two schemas from dot schemas from the schemas file and we're also going to import all the chess functions or specifically, we're actually going to import get AI move. That'll be our interface. So our router will equal API router. And then we're going to provide it with the prefix and we're going to name the prefix uh, chess. So the prefix just dictates that every endpoint under this, well, prefix is has chess put in front of it. So in this case, you can see that it's chess as the prefix and then move. Or for example, you could have another endpoint that has the same prefix, which is chess new game. So next we're going to make an asynchronous function called get chess move. Asynchronous means that the requests will be stacked up and responded to in a FIFO fashion. So Fast API is unique in that it, it basically never drops a request. It'll always respond due to its asynchronous nature. Now, an important thing to note here is that I've said the argument request is the class request, and this is how you access the model. So chess model equals request dot app dot state dot chess model. So this gets the model into the function or it gets the model from the state of the application. We've also set the uh, request type or as a parameter here. So chess request equals chess request. And there we have the board, which is the Fed representation from the class chess request. We get the move from get AI move. I've set it to one and then chess move is move. And our response is again, chess move. Uh, FVN representation. So next we need to build the run application. So this is 
well, this is the entry point to the application and how you actually run it. So we're just going to quickly import it. So from app.main, import app, import UV corn. And then we're just going to say if name equals main. uvcorn dot run app host equals zero point zero point zero. That means local host. And then I'm going to set the port to be eighty eighty. In past videos, I did five thousand, but the standard for fast API is eighty eighty. Uh, we're going to try run it here. I'm going to choose a Python interpreter and. Okay, we have an, an issue. And it appears that one, I didn't add my endpoint. So I'll do that now. So this is how you mount the endpoint onto the application. So from dot get chess AI move, import get move. And then we're just going to write app dot include router, get move dot router. So that's how you mount it. Okay, so I accidentally wrote h and it needs to be h5 and that will be the correct serialization type or file type and there you go now it's running oh and one final thing i spelled headers wrong it's with one or or r as americans say so here's an example of a fen representation it's just a string you go to this uh, page by going to localhost docs and this will bring you to this endpoint or to this swagger page and you can play around with it.